Okay, I did it! <laughs> I beat it! Finally! Okay. Uh, I finally get to talk about uh, the strange things that this game does. <laughs> Alrighty, so Shining Resonance Refrain has finally been conquered. And my overall thoughts on this game is it's just okay, I think. Um, one of the, the strange things that uh, occurred here was I tried uh, very hard to think of things that I liked. I, I, I spent some time yesterday and today just thinking like, what do I like about this game? And the really strange thing is I couldn't really think of anything that I liked about this game. Nothing just popped into my head. Uh, something just like, man, this was amazing. But at the same time, I'm not really disappointed per se, or I don't think it's a bad game or anything like that. Um, I guess it just didn't have anything that stood out enough or something that I can recall. It was just done really well. I, I guess everything was just done oh, like okay, I guess, maybe, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it's a weird stance for me to be in because it's... It shouldn't be like like I should be able to think of something like at least a couple of things that I like, uh, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just didn't spend enough time, uh, you know, sitting down and doing that. But uh, for the story, uh, was it satisfying? <laughs> um, I'm I'm gonna say the ending was pretty satisfying. Uh, you know, it it. It wrapped things up. Um, it, it did what it needed to. Um, there was just a lot of stumbles along the way. A lot of uh, what I like to call anime. <laughs> you know, just anime characters doing anime things uh, for anime reasons. Uh, that just kind of got in the way and it's just kind of stupid. Like, just, what, what are you guys doing? Um, did it feel complete? I guess it did feel complete. I suppose there's really nothing that needs to be... Nothing that was left unfinished. So, yeah, it felt complete. Uh, how was the pacing? Uh, I guess the pacing was good? I can't think of any snags along the way. Um, yeah, it was pretty much all story all the times. For the most part. Oh, so, yeah. I'd say the pacing was pretty good. Uh, thoughts on the story. Uh, I'm not a fan of the visual novel style of dialogue and the cutscene action delivery. Um, this game actually really made me appreciate games that actually do a scene-by-scene scene, uh, choreography of all the character models and uh, what they're doing and and you know how they're talking um you know camera work um just regular animation like like there's a lot of work that goes into that and having we're just gonna say of the vast majority like at least 90 percent of this game not doing that it really makes me appreciate all the games that do do that because um, I really missed it. Um, I, I, I'm i not a fan of visual novels, and this game did kind of scratch a, a, a visual novel itch, I guess. Um, and not, not in like a good way. Um, I actually think it, it didn't... It, it kind of reduced uh, things that I liked about the game. Uh, so, you know, it, it kind of backfired, I guess, for me, anyway. Um, super weird that Sonia, princess of Astoria, sleeps in an inn outside the castle. Even more strange that people expect that of her, and even more strange that her father tells her to do so. Just a, a little, that's just a little aside. I've mentioned that a couple of times, but it's just really, really weird. You know, like, your, your dad's the king. You, you probably have a room in the castle. Like, if you're gonna sleep in the inn, at least give us a reason why 
for whatever reason you per prefer or you're required to or something because uh, just it's just just weird it's just weird um, not a fan of having multiple people hold the Shining Dragon in them, Genus and Yuma, to be specific. Um, this was mostly because I actually, for the longest time, which I guess was a good thing in the sense of how it was presented and whatnot, but for the longest time, I thought Yuma was the only guy that had the Shining Dragon in him. And I was okay with that. But then Genus came around, and while that explained his character a lot, um... It, it was just kind of strange that Genus uh, it, I don't know how I can fully explain this, but uh, it I guess it was just strange that he he was basically the crux and everything um. And a lot of his knowledge uh, probably didn't um, it, it, I guess it didn't really make much sense I'm like how does how does he know about the last song uh, did the shining dragon tell him uh, if genus wasn't around at all then what does that make of the story as a whole um, I guess he was kind of like a deus ex machina kind of character perhaps uh he did show up at opportune moments to do opportune things so uh there's that i guess um let me see constant instances of going somewhere to accomplish a goal only to run away from said goal because something happens only to return shortly afterwards uh, that bothered me a lot. <laughs> uh, I, and, you know, I, I mentioned that, uh, quite a bit towards the, the end as well. Um, it's just annoying that we go somewhere to do something and then we're like, oh no, we can't, like, we, we, we tripped on a rock. We gotta go back and recover our ankles. And once we recover our ankles, we'll go back and we'll be ready for sure. We'll move the rock out of the way. Or not, in the case of Georg, where it's just like, uh, we'll figure something out. We couldn't figure something out in the moment, but we'll figure something out in the moment when we get there next time. Uh, just, just absolutely irritating. Uh, Yuma and crew refuse to kill or even bring up the subject of killing for many enemies. Um, Et slash Marion. Uh, I still don't understand the fascination with Yuma trying to save Marion. Uh, it felt so contrived. Uh, Ixella. Uh, we had prime opportunities to kill Ixella, but for some reason we just sympathized with her. And, uh, you know, she's our enemy. Uh, Joachim. Um, there's been a couple of instances where we fought him. And, uh, like, I, I could potentially give the last fight with him a pass. But in all honesty, like, he just should have died and we should have killed him. Um, there, there was even, like, there was the moment there where they were just talking to him and feeling bad for him. I'm like, you just don't feel bad for enemies like that. Uh, Beatrice, uh, she should have died. Like, I, I get that, you know, the redemption arc for her is great and learning about her is great or whatever, but she was the enemy. We, we had the proof that she... Uh, stole, basically, stole the, or tried to steal the, the harmonic or whatever. So, you know, just like, you know, kill her off or something. You know, give me the option to kill her off. I would kill her. Uh, Georg, uh, briefly touched, or I briefly touched on that. Uh, you know, we, we could have figured out a, a way to, to kill him when we were fighting him. Uh, and Zest. Uh, we actually did kill Zest, actually. I, I wrote this before we killed Zest, but, uh, there was there was a couple oppor or one opportunity before we actually killed him that we could have killed him, but you know we we gotta feel bad for the bad guys or something. Uh, the Sanguine Church betraying the Empire is a cool twist that is sadly not utilized as a surprise. Um, and this 
This kind of ties into the next point of a strange amount of character development, screen time, and plot development occurs through the eyes and discussions of the enemy as opposed to the main party. If you think about this game, about what everything has happened, okay, I, I really want to say the vast majority of the lore and uh, the world building and things like that happen from the conversations of the bad guys. Uh, there's there's not a whole lot of world building and plot development on Yuma and Crew's side. And so when when you get the, the Sanguine Church betraying them, we, we immediately, maybe not like immediately, but like it happens so early on where, you know, Georg is like, uh, acting all suspicious to the princess and then he just like outright says you know like I'm delaying the princess for our grand plan and and then he just ends up betraying her and they don't do anything cool with that betrayal and it's just a huge missed opportunity um uh, the writing was okay I, I don't I don't think I really have any issues with the writing um, all the characters were fairly interesting um, I suppose. I don't think there was a single character that I disliked that wasn't Fromage. <laughs> Fromage was a uh, typical uh, annoying sidekick character, I guess. Uh, for gameplay mechanics and design, some gameplay elements that stand out. Um, something I've taken for granted in a lot of RPGs is viewing information about stuff because in this game you cannot view certain information without going to the inn such as character information monster information uh viewing events which you know or whatever uh and tutorials like the, some three out of four of these things are vitally important things that you should be able to access at any time it doesn't make any sense to have to go back to a town stop what you're doing Go all the way back to the end to look up something so that you can go about your business again. Um, I, I I don't understand uh, any part of that design decision. And alongside the me appreciating, uh, what was it? I was appreciating something earlier. Oh yeah, scene direction. I greatly appreciate uh, designers and developers uh, giving us the information uh, easily accessible and quickly accessible wherever you want to access it. Uh, let me see. Insufficient explanations on just about everything in the game, such as bonding traits, stats, and tuning. Uh, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in this game. And... There's not a lot of explanation on what it does, what it's used for, how it's useful. Uh, bonding is probably the one of the bigger offenders here. Um, like, even after looking it up, some people out there are just like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like, well, I don't know either. So <laughs> I guess nobody's going to be knowing. Um, and then here, here goes into... A really interesting place for this game is the item economy unrewarding and too restrictive there are four relevant item types in this game there's consumables monster parts aspects and scores okay uh, consumables I started using at the end there um, monster parts we use to craft things which is primarily just uh, consumables and aspects. There's aspects which uh, are essentially um, like boosts, bonuses, stuff like that. Uh, and then scores which improve our tuning percentages. So with, with only those things available to us, we then go out into the field, we fight monsters, and as far as I could tell, aspects do not drop from monsters. 
Um, so we're left with treasure chests and little collection points. Collection points, as far as I'm aware, uh, do not reward aspects. So the only thing that you can get out in the field from exploring fighting things is monster parts, uh, and sigils, I guess, but we're not talking about sigils. So that, that moves into chests rarely, if ever, seem to contain something of immediate usefulness. And that's a really weird thing because, you know, in RPGs, we've been trained to look at a treasure chest and be like, that's going to have something that it may not be useful to me, but it will be, or it might not be useful to me uh, in the grand scheme of things, but it'll, it'll be useful for something. Um, and it'll, it'll be helpful, I guess. Uh, like if it was a piece of equipment, I might be able to equip that right now and give me an immediate boost. Uh, if it was a, uh, a weapon, I can now potentially do more damage if it's an upgrade, but none of that stuff happens. Opening chests isn't rewarding due to lack of equipment. Why isn't there any equipment in this game? It's, it's. It's, it's both cool that you can play a game, you could play an RPG that doesn't have any, any equipment in it. Like think of the last game that you didn't have to purchase equipment in an RPG. I certainly can't think of one, uh, certainly not off the top of my head. Um, but because equipment doesn't exist, the only two items to improve combat effectiveness are aspects and scores. Aspects provide cool customization options that are dwarfed by stat boosting. Um, which, like, I didn't even spam at the end there. I don't even know what I was doing at the end there. But um, stats seem to be the bread and butter of what you need in here. And uh, really, I, I don't think you really need anything else. Uh, and scores are fairly rare and only appear to provide 1% increases to your tuning of your harmonic. Um, so, so with only aspects, which you only have a maximum of five, um, and at least for me, like I had a hard time finding a good uh, harmonic tuning thing that had five or even four. Um, I was basically stuck with three for a lot of characters. Uh, and, you know, I put in whatever aspects I have that are good, and I tune it to whatever I can, and that's what I have. That is that is all the customization I have for improving the damage output of my character. It's pretty limited, all things considered. Um, and then, a really, really interesting thing that I thought of the other day is our aspects meant to be equipment. Um, if you think about other RPGs out there, um, for example, like Tales of Vesperia, maybe. Uh, that game is like fleeting away, far away. Um, but uh, there are some RPGs out there where like if you equip equipment, you'll get stats, you know, uh, like defense, things like that. But you'll also potentially get uh, certain abilities that you can learn. And aspects uh, feel like they're supposed to fill that 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 slot. Um, they don't do it in the same way, but they kind of do that interesting thing. If if not equipment, maybe like like persistent spells or something like that. Um, it's a really interesting concept of how they're trying to use aspects here. Um, I don't think it hits the mark fully. Um, I do think there needs to be more customization options that this game can do. Um, but it's an interesting platform to build off of. Uh, if they just added more things, um, or maybe even just less bad aspects, uh, we might might have something to work with here. Ah. <sighs> 
okay. Um, onto some other things. Uh, picking up items, opening chests, and transitioning to new areas interrupts field dialogue. There were some field dialogue things that I wanted to read, but, you know, because... I'm silly. I, you know, I still want to pick up things. I don't want to sit there and just read that. I mean, it takes forever for that stuff to cycle through. So I'm picking up things. I'm fighting enemies. I'm transitioning through different areas of the map. Um, and it just cuts off the dialogue. And, you know, what? I wanted to, wanted to read that. Uh, when a new person joins the party, the leading character is removed from the active party for the new character. That is incredibly frustrating. Don't do that. Uh, when you stop sprinting, you do a slide before you regain control of your character. Uh, that was obnoxious. Don't do that. Alright, on to combat. This is gonna take a while. Um, the early b bosses are incredibly punishing. Holy moly, I was like level 6 or level 4 or something like that. And my first boss was level 12. And he killed everybody but Yuma. <laughs> I had to solo him. The next boss... Killed everybody but Yuma. And I was terrified for the rest of this game. Thankfully, things evened out a little bit. I got some useful characters, uh, started doing some damage. And, uh, you know, I grinded a little bit in the, the Grimoires because those were kind of fun. Um, and, uh, you know, things started to level out a little bit. But then it just, like, like went out of control because I ended the game at level 60 and the boss was level 84. I, I don't know how how that happens. Um, bosses have a knack for one or two shotting party members, forcing me to solo duo the fight. Uh, briefly touched on that, but yeah. Um, the Shining Dragon form is powerful and effective, but obnoxious when it comes to berserking. Party members can be extremely squishy, and there's little indication how berserking happens. I berserked, I think, two or three times this entire game and every single time I did not run out of mana, as far as I'm aware, before the Berserk happened. And it didn't make any sense to me. I don't know why. Uh, the game might be balanced around Shining Dragon form. Um, the more I played this game, the more I feel that that is true. Because uh, again, I ended the game at level 60 and the final boss was 84. Uh, that's a 24 level difference, um, and in most games out there, uh, that should not be possible. Uh, but the Shining Dragon form did carry me quite a bit through many, many fights. So, uh, interesting uh, mechanic there. Uh, let's see, let's see. Ally, Ally Melee AI seems reckless early on. <laughs> uh, they're primarily just reckless all the time, but uh, towards the end there, uh, at least the ranged characters started getting better, um, and I just had Leston because I had Leston. Um, I I should have swapped him out for Agnum. Agnum is so much cooler, but oh well. Uh, dashing in combat has a lot of ending animation frames. This was kind of annoying because it, it at least it felt like in practice, uh, just running away was a lot more effective than just dashing. Now, if you equipped some aspects to improve dashing, then sure, like dashing might have been pretty nice, but what an incredibly wasteful use of aspect slots. <laughs> so, uh, dashing is just seems really bad. Uh, the AP meter seems to limit combat creativity early on. Uh, I'm gonna say limits combat creativity, period. Um, I don't know if I have anything in here. Uh, I do not. Um, I think, I think combat as a whole could have been more engaging. Um, I, I guess I get why the, the AP meter is there. Cause you know, you're just going to be spamming auto attacks all the time. What's the use for force abilities if you're just gonna have auto attacks all the time? And I guess my my personal retort to that is just, well, then we make force powers more useful. Uh, like the the dragon 
uh, oh, the, the, the dragon element abilities that I got, like uh, adding wind damage to my sword, or light damage, or fire damage, or water damage, those were really cool, those were very useful. Um, the one that increased my attack, that was really nice, you know, like, buffs are always going to be useful no matter what stage of the game you're in, but something that just, like, does damage all around and knocks enemies away, that's only going to be useful for certain, certain fights, certain circumstances. Um, so I think they could have done a little bit more interesting things with the force powers, and I also think that they could have opened up options for using more force abilities. I think 4 is very limited when all you have is auto attack, uh, break attack, and force abilities. Um, so there, there could have been more customization there. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Let's see, uh, is the combat customization meaningful? <laughs> I, I kind of just touched on that, but um, not really. Uh, item usage is strange. Need to enter the menu to use items which doesn't flow well with the type of combat presented. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know how I feel about this because it is really weird that, um, like, for example, Tales of Basuria, uh, if, if you want to use items, you open up a battle menu to which you can select a various amount of uh, uh, things to do, such as selecting items, which sends you to the item list to use. But in this game, it sends you to the main menu where you can do a variety of things. And I honestly don't know which is better, but it's just kind of weird, I guess. Uh, it, it's it's not something I'm used to, and so it just stood out to me. Um, there are interesting mechanics that you can do to cheat <laughs> uh, in combat, such as chase, uh, change force abilities mid-fight. So I uh, I had mentioned that combat customization is probably not meaningful, and I. I think that being able to change force powers in the middle of a fight does feel like cheating. Um, you know, you you go into a fight with the abilities that you have set, and being able to change them mid-fight just it 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 doesn't feel right. You know, a lot of games don't do that. It's 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 continually uh, unorthodox. Uh, a lot of the things that this game does. Uh, you can use items with a character who you lost control of, such as with Confusion. That was really, really interesting. Um, I, I feel like that that is just a, a bug, like a QA kind of thing that uh, either the developers didn't want to fix or uh, nobody caught or you know nobody cared. Um, that definitely seems like something you shouldn't be able to do. Um, Essentially, anything you can do in the pause menu while combat, uh, you uh, you can do basically. Um, you you can't you can't change aspects. You can't change the center of the band. Um, you can't change party members. But you could you can kind of do everything. Oh, uh, you you can't change bonds either. But basically, just items, force abilities and uh changing party uh formation which is actually another thing that i don't have on here um you have to go into the menu to change battle formation in combat that's really strange all right moving on moving on we're almost there we're almost there uh for dungeons uh the grimoire dungeons don't guarantee the loot they advertise and that's that's annoying i don't like that um, I don't really have any favorite dungeons. Uh, none of them felt really annoying. Um, none of them felt inflated by backtracking. Although there was a, a decent amount of backtracking in this game. Of just going back to the castle. To go back to this area that was really far away. That's annoying. That's a cardinal sin for me. That I didn't think was 
worth putting in this game, but it might. Like, there might be food for that one. Uh, food for that for that. Um, there's some practical dungeon design issues here. Uh, practical dungeon design meaning um, if you have a building, like, let's just say Fort Graal. I have Fort Graal here. There's a lot of dead ends. There's a lot of places that don't go anywhere. What What is the purpose of those? You know, like, each room should have a purpose. Each hallway should have a purpose. And when it's just a dungeon to put monsters places, um, it doesn't have a practical purpose. Um, so this this game kind of suffers from that a little bit. Uh, and it, it's, it's not like, oh my goodness, you should change that. It's just something that I like pointing out. Um, and for Cardinal Sins, uh, stuff that the game does that... Uh, uh, frustrates me a lot. Uh, things that games should not do, basically. Uh, backup party members earn less experience. Uh, we would change that to the earn no experience. Um, incredibly frustrating when you get into the next cardinal sin, which is forcing the player to use certain party members. So there were a couple of fights, uh, like when I got Agnum, for example, I was forced to use Agnum in the fight against Genus. Uh, that was a horrible idea because that was one of the hardest bosses in the game. Uh, and then less than an Agnum fighting outside Fort Garal. Holy crap. This, so w one of the things about Cardinal Sins is they do things that could make it so that you set the game down because it's too frustrating or you can't move on any further. And having forcing me to use Leston and Agnum in that fight could have been catastrophically bad if I liked Marion or Sonya or... Uh, Genus or Excella, if I wanted them to be my fourth party member, I would have like a level 29 Agnum or 19 Agnum and a level like 31 Leston against level 65 enemies. That that that's a no. <laughs> That's where you look at that and you're like, dang, I got to level up these characters 30 freaking levels so that I can fight these enemies. I don't think so. Um, so that's a huge, huge cardinal sin for this game. Um, moving on. Miscellaneous uh, for sound. Um, I, I really need to improve my audio setup because I'm not able to hear all of the uh, the music in the games that I'm playing and um, I'm kind of missing out because some of the music tracks in this game are actually pretty good so uh, I, I did like a lot of the music that I heard um, there was a lot of it that I didn't hear um, voice acting in this game was actually pretty good um, for for a game that that doesn't for a game that doesn't do everything very well like it's not a great game just an okay game but it does have some pretty good voice acting I I will 100% give it that uh, so props to the voice actors you guys did a good job um, also something that I did not mention which I guess could go here the main story was fully voice acted thank you very much thank you thank you thank you uh, for the graphics um, I thought the visuals were, were fine no problems with that. The only thing that I thought uh, was quite uh, questionable, which uh, probably even probably shouldn't even be a criticism. Like, if if we just look at the game that's been presented, we shouldn't be surprised. But the costume designs for or costume design for uh, Sonya is a little questionable. Um, you're a knight. Uh, what are you doing wearing what you're wearing? But again. You know, this game has like swimsuits and things like that, so uh, it's not it's not really so much of a complaint as just like a uh, like, all right, man, you do you. Uh, replay value.
I have no idea. Um, I guess in from what I've played already, I don't think this game has any replay value, but uh I guess I guess that's just where it's at. Uh oh, okay, so they just start me off right there. But yeah, I don't think the game has any replay value. Which is which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh other. The inn doesn't cost anything to stay there. Now, I mentioned that there I couldn't think of anything that I like about this game. I like that. I, I like this. Every RPG out there, they charge you an arm and a leg to, to go visit an inn. And this game doesn't do that. It just makes you go back to the, to the main town over and over and over again. But it doesn't cost anything. That's so wonderful. Thank you very much, game, for, for being great at not charging me for the inn. And so, for the very last portion, if the developer is watching, I think you made a solid game here. Uh, foundation wise um, I don't think it was was great it didn't do anything great um, but there are some nice moments in it um, I think all the the voice acting is done really well um, I think the writing wasn't uh, done poorly or anything like that I think a lot of the characters were were quite memorable um, and I even mentioned at the end there that like Excella just her writing alone is is incredibly interesting. She she says things in just a certain way that's it's just really nice. I I I like the writing for her and I like the delivery that the voice actor gives. Um I think this this is gonna sound harsh, but I'm not really sure how you're going to create a sequel out of this based off of the mechanics that are already in it. Um, I think things would have to be redesigned to uh, make things more interesting. Because, um, like, as I mentioned, I don't think there's a lot of customizable options in the combat. And so I think that might have to be looked at differently. Um, do do something a little bit different uh go a different direction um maybe maybe even go back you don't even have to go to equipment but uh maybe something in addition to aspects um there's there's so many different types of ways to give abilities to the player uh such as like talent trees sphere grids and and uh gosh uh, uh, passive abilities like a Tales of Vesperia. Like, there's there's so many different things that can be drawn from, and so I I would really like to see um, just a brand new system. Um, not not the biggest fan of the current one. Uh, it 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 does its job. I think it could be better. Uh, but overall, I think you made a solid game, um, and. I, I would say I'd, I'd play the sequel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I, I would play the sequel. Um, I probably wouldn't buy it on release. Uh, you know, I'd probably wait a while, buy it for $25 like I did for this one. But I'd play it. Uh, but that will wrap up today's stream of uh, Mining Resonance Reframe. Uh... Pumped uh, quite a bit of time in here. I think the estimated time was 32 hours, and I put in 31 hours, or maybe even a little bit more than 31 hours. Uh, I spent five hours grinding at one point because I thought I was in trouble, and I might not have been in trouble. I probably was in trouble. Um, but yeah, that'll wrap it up for me for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I'll be back tomorrow, 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific, for some sort of video games. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you tomorrow. Peace.